Welcome, Brosips. Today we're going to talk about how to get started with programming. And this, this is for business analysts, people who are using Excel. And I think most programming tutorials, they start by giving you some very basic instructions about how to use the language. So they'll say, we're going to print some shit to the screen. We're going to add some numbers together. Or maybe we'll open a file. All of that is wonderful. But from, this, from my standpoint, I'm thinking, OK, I use Excel. Like, how do I actually open the program language? Like, what the fuck is it relative to how I use Excel, where I want to type shit into cells, want to manipulate data, where I can see everything? I think there's a disjunction here, and I hope today is like the first of a, the very, a very small step of many, hopefully, to come to kind of bridge this gap. So, one thing I think we're going to start by opening Excel. I think everyone's aware of how to do that. In this case, I'm just going to click on the Excel icon, and I'm going to open up Microsoft Excel now. There's an important point we need to get start, or we need to start with from the beginning, which is Excel is an application, and it's a way of manipulating data, right? So, or as an application, it allows you to manipulate data. One thing that that Excel users often get confused on are are the terms in Excel. So, I've opened up the Excel application, and it defaults to opening up an Excel workbook called Book One. You may say this is kind of semantics, but it, it's going to be important, and we'll explain. And I want to explain why, but first, let's just get through it. So we are, we've are we opened the Excel application. We have a workbook called Book 1, and our workbook is made up of three worksheets, Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. Many people kind of get these terms confused. They'll say, like, whoa, this worksheet or this spreadsheet. Well, we want to be very clear. We have a workbook that has one-to-many worksheets, and then each worksheet has one-to-many cells. This is important. Now let's open up Python, and I haven't shown you how to install Python. I'm using the Anaconda distribution of Python. We'll have a different tutorial for that, but I click on my IPython uh, icon, and this opens up the IPython REPL. REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. You don't have to worry about that. Just know that this is a, this is a way of interacting with the Python. It's a Python application that allows you to interact with the language. So. Excel is this application that gives you this visual way of interacting with data. Similarly, Python is. But in this case, over on the right, we see we have this really ugly command line looking thing versus this spreadsheet interface that we're used to. So let's dive in. Let's do one quick thing in, in both so we can kind of compare. Because I want what I want to show is that they're both very similar. The way that the IPython or any Python REPL shell works is going to, you're going to put, enter commands and receive back information you just as you would in Excel. So one thing I can do in Excel, right, I can create formulas, or I can just type text. So I'm going to type hello world, because this is what a lot of programming tutorials will start with. They'll say print this to the screen. And you're like, well, why the fuck would I print this? Because in, in Excel, I can just type it. I can make the cell A1 say hello world. Well, it, in Python, in, in IPython here, or in any Python REPL, again, I can type hello world. But there's a caveat, because it's a string. I need to put quotes around it. So I didn't put quotes around it in Excel. Excel says, oh, I can identify if this is a string. I will treat it as such. Python, and most, in every programming language, you have to, to tell the language this explicitly. And we do that with quotes. So right off the bat, you're like, oh, fuck, this is more complicated, right? Just typing something to the screen, I know I get back hello world, but one, I'm not sure where it is, and two, I had to put quotes around it. Excel didn't require me to do that. Well. There's, there's a lot of functionality that this kind of level of detail is going to enable. So we're going to be able to do things with more data. We're going to do more complicated analysis. We're going to do more badass shit because we have some first principles here in terms of programming constructs that we're going to learn. Obviously, all of that is down the road. But for now, what I want you to understand is for printing out basic things, yeah, it's okay to say that if I want to write Hello World in cell A1, it's a lot easier to do that just in Excel than it is in Python. And... I think that's okay. Like we should, there, no programmer would say, "Oh, no matter what the task is, I would do it in Python versus Excel." There's, there's just shit you're going to do in Excel that should be done in Excel, and I, I kind of want to state that explicitly so you can understand as you make a little decision tree of how you're going to tackle a problem. Like, if you if you want to open up a spreadsheet, if you just need to type something to the screen, then a programming language is not the best way to do that. And I don't think the tutorials make that clear enough. Like that there is this process before you begin where you say, like, well, what am I trying to do? Okay, maybe a spreadsheet is the way to go, or maybe a Word document is the way to go. Like, this isn't, just because it can be done with code doesn't mean that it should be done. So, I know I've kind of given you a lot of bullshit here. Let's break down a little bit about what Excel is doing that I think will help make the Python, what's happening behind the scenes in Python a little easier to understand. So, cell A1 right now that, that I'm on, I just typed hello world. 
But really what I'm doing is I'm, is cell A1, which is a cell is part of a spread, is part of a worksheet, a worksheet is part of a workbook. Workbooks are accessible by the Excel application. So I say Excel, open this workbook within this spreadsheet, within this cell, set the value of this cell to a, te to, to a string called hello world. So what I did here is I took this, this cell and I said the value of this cell is now hello world. So at this point in time, this is what it equals. Whereas in Python, right, I'm just saying, hey, print me back, hello world, return it to the screen. It doesn't exist anywhere. This is, it's a big difference. So it, it's just kind of in the ether right now. It's in this Python environment. It's not physically anywhere. So we have to specify in Python, if I'm typing something, if I'm, if I'm putting some information, I'm do, doing anything, if Excel automatically assigns it to a specific place, in this case, cell A1, within worksheet sheet one, within workbook book one, within the Excel application, right? And I keep hammering that because I want you guys to get that we are in, we're, we not only did an operation, but we did an operation in that is setting the value for this specific thing. Whereas in Python, we are in this environment, this REPL, we're just typing commands out, it's just being returned to us. It's not being stored anywhere. And this is very important because everything we do in Python now when we're working with data, the first step and the last step is gonna involve opening up a file, do it, we're gonna you know, do something, we're gonna create some data, or we're gonna grab some data, or we're gonna manipulate it, but then we're gonna have to write it out to a file. So those two steps, like open and write, we did in Excel by double clicking and just defaults to opening a workbook, or if we wanted to open a specific workbook, we would find it and open it. We're gonna have to say in Python, we're gonna have to type that out, open the workbook and then, or open the file, and then we're gonna, when we wanna write to a file, we have to say, I'm actually writing this. Whereas in Excel, it's just if I happen to be in this cell and I type something, that's the value of the cell. It could be sum, you know, one plus one, whatever, oh, I typed it wrong. It doesn't matter. Excel assumes it, it's saying, I'm gonna work with this one cell. And while this makes simple operations very easy to use, we're gonna see as we progress in these tutorials how this actually makes things a lot more complicated and, and harder to do certain operations. So we're, we're gonna get into all that, but at the very least, I hope you grasp from this tutorial is that when you do things in Excel, you're doing something, you're doing an operation just like you would in Python, but you're doing it in a specific place within the Excel application. And it's okay that there are a lot of things that are just gonna be easier to be done in Excel versus doing them with code, whether that's Python or any other language. So I just want you guys to get that. I wanna get that point out there so you can say, oh, well, I, I had this problem at work. It's easier to be done in Excel. Then just fucking do it in Excel. Like no one's gonna fight you on that. And I, I don't think the tutorials make that clear enough. So anyway, rant over. The next tutorial, tutorial we're gonna get into actually how we print things out, how we use functions in Excel versus how we, excuse me, functions in Python which is how we kind of use some basic functions in Excel. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we can put these to files and how, how these operations work. So hopefully you will check back into the next tutorial and that I didn't bore you too much with this shit.